And now for our weekly news segment. Hey, hey guys. Hey. <laughs> We're doing it, man. So far, so good. Don't jinx it. So far, so good. So <laughs> I actually, Kim.com tweeted something and then I tweeted the space in the comments. Yeah. So hopefully he's going to see it. But we know he has time because he's been on those spaces for like, I would wake up, see him in the space, and go to sleep, and he's still in the space. <laughs> I don't know how people I know, do right? that. You know? And he's got Monero on his mind. He's got Monero on his mind, big time. He does, he does. Yep. So if not this time, hopefully, eventually, we will get him on. DM him like uh, two days ago. No response, no response. He probably gets like a billion DMs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. DM. Yet. DM, no. I try to, whenever he's posting something, and it's like, Two minutes ago, I'm instantly trying to see, hey, you want to hop on? Hey, you <laughs> I know I see like... you right <laughs> Do you want to then... share your screen? Because I don't see it here. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into it. For the people watching in, uh, on Twitter, you can join on YouTube if you do want to see the news, um, like the visuals. If not, you can hop on after and, um, and see it. So or actually also, yeah, for people in the spaces listening, I know we're also streaming this show on Twitter too. So you can probably... I don't know if you're able oh, to do oh. both or see both. That's an option. <laughs> don't try that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> better be safe. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Oh, you have to. Yeah, there you go. Okay, oh, good. Actually. But yeah, so happy, happy Saturday, everybody. It's weekend. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you share so that everybody can can see the news and price report and the show. But other than that, let's get into it. I actually just saw this like a few moments ago. Um, and it caught my attention because it's absolutely insane. So Canada is going to mandate psychiatric medication for those that refuse mRNA injections or any kind of vaccination. Like what? Yeah. Is that real? Uh, let, let's play the clip and let's see. I mean, there is a definite assault against the unvaccinated. And you've talked about how uh, even th they recommend, you know, perhaps psychiatric medication or something for people that don't want to take a vaccine. So this has come out recently out of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario. The college sent out a, a letter or a memo to all the doctors in Ontario suggesting to them, now so far they're not mandating it, they're just suggesting it, that any of their unvaccinated patients, that they should consider that they have a mental problem and that they should be put on psychiatric medication. Holy shit. What? <laughs> Holy shit. What is going on? That is all out war. Oh my God. This yeah. is insane. I am feeling it more and more in my personal life as well from people I know. It's, it's scary. It's scary when the quote unquote professionals uh, start to take away people's liberty and they have the power of the state behind them. This is terrifying. Yeah, but mandate. Like, are you serious? Like, mandating that? Are you serious? Like, this is insane. As you were playing that, I was just waiting for Chris Sky to come busting through the, the, the back wall. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the microphone. We may have to get Chris Sky back on the uh, show. No, I don't know. I don't think he'll win him over again. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Um, I really, I always liked the guy. And the know. fact that he turned up, like, then didn't like me. I was like, dude. Doug fell hurt. Like, I like he stole you, hurt, man. clearly. <laughs> He yeah. has pain in his heart. Chris Guy, if you're listening. I don't think he don't is. Jump, <laughs> jump in the Twitter spaces. Is it is he back on Twitter? Because I think he was one of the banned people, right? I was no he, he well, must have been banned. I don't know, but we'll talk somebody, about it. Somebody start that uh Twitter poll. Elon, should can we bring Chris Guy back? We should start it as Monero. Oh, so you get look at that, oh. China. <laughs> trying to gain, get his effect. Oh, like, we vote yes. Do you? <laughs> Oh gosh! Um, someone said, "Play the rest." Yes. So you know what? We'll we'll just finish it because yeah, who knows what I was gonna say. So let's finish this so one. So far, it's just a suggestion, but the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario should not be making these kinds of suggestions. This is extremely unethical, and this is a very very slippery slope. Uh, if if they're suggesting that people who wish to have bodily autonomy and and don't want an experimental vaccine, that there may be something mentally wrong with them. That is a very, very dangerous slippery slope that we're on. Oh man, you're so right. I just thank you for your courage. The people of Canada are really uh, appreciative of what you've done, how you're speaking. Thank mm. you. Please don't uh, stop doing it. Uh, we're grateful for you. And I know the world is also going to be hearing a lot more from you, Dr. Mackis. Thank you very much. 
Dr. Mackis. Let's get Dr. Mackis at Monerotopia. Let's get him down there. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, wow. But, that, that's crazy. That's. Damn. I saw this like a couple minutes ago before the show. It's insane. I literally can't keep up with the, the New World Order news. <laughs> it's like. It's so much. It's, like, it's, like it's going exponential at this point. Actually, talking about that, if you guys have any, because we can follow everything. So if you have anything that you want us to cover, uh, add us, uh, DM us. Uh, we have the Telegram uh, group. Um, at me. Yeah, people I throw know. in a ton of good news stories there. Yeah, just make sure you at, yeah, at, to, what's your, your handle there? Um, but let me see, because I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Tony, you have something else. <laughs> it's uh, Tony underscore uber and b l e u so if somebody just starts to write in tony you'll find them so yeah anybody that wants <laughs> any yeah, good, go, good news please. just at message yes. tony in the monerotopia telegram yes please do because yeah. we can't we can't keep up so now I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll touch on ftx but we'll, we won't go too deep into the details because it's just it's just so much it's a lot so we won't talk too much about it but i do have a couple of things that i want to talk about um here's where the ftx scandal gets really interesting and scary. The names and deposit amounts of every single FTX customer could become public in the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. It happened in the past with Celsius and, and other platforms, but it's really scary. It's really scary to see. And it kind of feels good that to, when you're not on these platforms and you know that you're safe and nothing happened to you, it just feels good in a way i don't know but definitely like don't don't stop using uh centralized exchanges and and all these things because eventually things like this will happen and then let's um let's see this as well facts biden funded ukraine right then ukraine funded ftx ftx funded democrats with millions this is known as money laundering 101 and i've been hearing this more and more and yeah, um I guess this is true. And if it is true, then that's that's absolutely insane. Yeah, I mean, I remember I, I was following this pretty closely because I have a friend who's uh, actually a fam you know, family friend that uh, works for the Democratic Party. And she, she she always knew that I was very much into crypto. And I remember she, she came to me. This is, you know, a long, long time ago when this first when he first started to make these donations. She's like, hey, do you know who this Sam Bakeman guy is. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, is that the FTX guy? Wow. Because she, she was working on a very high level campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. and they had, he's like, yeah, it was really random. They wanted to, you know, they came and donated a ton of money to our thing. I was like, holy shit. Uh, I had already like had that guy on my list of like curious people, you know? I mean, he just came out of nowhere and the whole FTX thing completely came out of nowhere it was like on steroids it was for people that were in the space for a while it was like boom they're like ftx like what and mm -hmm. you're like you see this guy getting paraded around as the, the the new uber genius it was like what like he wasn't it was it was all bizarre to me from the beginning and then when i heard when i heard that that would really uh, set off the red flags so yeah it's not rumor i mean he gave a he he how many how many mil it was like a hundred mil right he invested into he was one of the i think the second largest donor yeah yeah a, a lot something like that and yes. you know he donated to republicans too but obviously you know there was there's was some strategy there but by by and large it all went to certain certain types of candidates you know in, in exchange for what right i mean it sounds yeah. like it really was almost a, a money laundering activity that was going on there and when he came to fame, he was just, okay, FTX, oh my God, this guy, people compared him to Warren Buffett and he's the most generous billionaire and all these things. It came out of nowhere and it right. went down just as fast. And the New York Times is still trying to prop the guy up. Yeah, we'll get into it. We'll yeah, go ahead. Into it. It's insane. Like, yeah, like you see, like the media is trying to portray him as something good or maybe you know not as bad definitely not as a criminal and actually i've heard that ftx was insolvent since april last year <laughs> so it's crazy uh but so biden gave loads of money to ukraine get who gave loads of money to ftx who gave loads of money to democrats sounds like a potentially massive scandal the media will have absolutely no interest in covering <laughs> which is true 
Yeah, he was the second donor only to Soros. Around 50 million he donated. By large margin. Wow, that's crazy. Sam Bankman free donated hundreds of millions of dollars stolen from FTX customers to politicians and related organizations. The New York Times, Washington Post, and Reuters are now whitewashing his actions, actions which have ruined millions of lives. Propaganda and corruption in action. Sam Bankman fried uh, the financial system of favor. Before FTX collapsed, founder poured millions into pandemic prevention. How Sam Bankman frees FTX crypto empire collapsed. I don't see any criminal <laughs> in the titles. <laughs> they're not going to say that. They're even they're even going to <laughs> Caroline the Queen, the Queen. Oh my God! The fake charity nerd girl behind the FTX FTX collapse. <laughs> She's a math whiz who loves Harry Potter, French political <laughs> philosophy, and taking big risks. She doesn't believe in stop losses, by the way. She doesn't. She's not a believer Queen in that. Caroline. I didn't read this article. Uh, it's kind of don't want to go down. <laughs> um, she's and also. So wait, is, is the whole sex tape thing real? Is that real? No, I, think that, I thought that was a joke. Is that a joke or is that real? Okay. So. Anybody, <laughs> anybody comment that knows? <laughs> I thought that was fake. I just can't keep up with this stuff. I don't know. I don't know what's, what's, like, what's real or fake anymore. Okay, so on. <laughs> for the guys that hopped on, hoping that we'll watch it together, we won. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can get off the stream right now. Someone made, someone anonymous made a website, and they said that on November 18th, so that was yesterday, that they were going to release that legit sex tape. But yesterday, they uh, rewrote the website and they said, oh, we didn't get as much attention as we wanted. Ah. No, we yeah. Yeah, which eh, sketch sketch but i've seen people post some naked naked pool party picture uh, so, yeah uh, i saw one it was like all dudes and like three women who had their clothes on <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. i don't think that was it because it's just too funny but that's okay there's no way well maybe it is maybe they don't need to take off their clothes to <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kidding like, what's the, <laughs> what's uh, the kinkiness to it <laughs> i don't know man i don't know what's going on in this world it's <clears throat> yeah. It's anyways. Moving Go ahead, on. Tony, keep going. <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> okay, but yeah, this this article talks about her and uh, the things that she's done, and um, you know, um, it doesn't. She, she ran Almeida or whatever it was, right? Yeah, 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 she did. She did. And actually, it's kind of funny because when they put her in that position, she said that she was kind of, and I read this in an article, she was kind of worried because she was uh, gonna be made to take giant decisions that she wasn't ready to take <laughs> and she didn't have to do that in the in, in the position that she has before so she was put in a position that she couldn't really handle obviously yeah yeah and she said there are a lot of people who are very smart but aren't good necessarily at the messy world of trading especially crypto carolyn allison <laughs> that sucks you know mm. Yeah, playing with people's money is not a joke. It's so it's you know, we could talk about this endlessly, honestly. But... Yeah, and, and it's really not, a, it's the same old story. It's the same as Mount Guy. It's, it's just the different characters. It's Fine. you know, I, I, don't, I hate people that actually had money on there. I feel really bad for them, but it's I know people. literally <laughs> the same old story. This is nothing new. So. It's just a bigger. I, it might be the biggest one we've ever we ever do see, right? But this might be peak idiocy in terms of people getting wiped out on an exchange like this. I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have to be like a Coinbase goes down or something. But I don't really see that happening. So this this might be peak idiocy, and then people start to understand and move away from decentralized ex exchanges. Mm -hmm. Peak when it comes to not only that, but all the drugs and all the things that they've been doing. So the package all together and the Democrats and yeah, the crime, yeah, 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 it's like nothing. The it's greed, like, the greed. Oh my god, crazy. Keep going, but, Tony. Keep going. Yeah, but talking about crazy, Cardano is going to release their own private <laughs> blockchain, and let, let's hear what he has to say about Monero and Zcash. Looked at Monero and Zcash and all these other things, and we're like, ah, oh, fuck those guys. We could do so much better. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck those guys, right? Fuck those Monero people. Fuck, fuck those Zcashers. People have been actually commenting like, all right, we'll see Midnight Project in 2028, <laughs> because they're not known for delivering projects 
necessarily fast. But the thing and then the uh the Monero Twitter came out pretty strong <laughs> against it. They didn't. Do you have they some tweets? But get... listen, how can you say that? How can you be on stage and say, fuck those guys? What? <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? How can you say that? So but the reason why the Monero Twitter came so hard on them, and I am too, and everybody else, is because so Cardano is launching a new privacy blockchain and token. Okay. Uh, Charles Hoskinson, CEO of the firm that's behind Cardano, says the network will strive to preserve privacy while giving access to regulators and auditors. So backdoor. Yeah, this is why people don't like it. Yeah. But it's crazy that there's a whole group of people on Twitter that are like, awesome that sounds like a great idea it's the perfect balance between you know being yeah. having privacy and being able to not get booted off of exchanges like so you know forget what i said before about peak idiocy being reached it's just yeah, like the sheeple are just it's it's greed it's still it's greed it's mostly greed uh people just kind of like trying to ignore it in their minds because whatever they own a lot of cardano or something or they yeah. see, you know but that's not going to work out but yeah, Monero, what, what do you have some of the Monero tweets? They came out <laughs> pretty hard. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll pull them up in a second. But what I do want to mention, so the firm behind the Cardano blockchain, Input Output Global, is releasing a new privacy-focused blockchain called Midnight and a token called Dust to accompany the new network. Now, I'm not sure if the name Dust for the privacy token is because of, like, oh, there's Dust and you can see who's behind it or that is going to go to Dust. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be either one of the two. But it goes into, into details and how they needed something different, something that is not so complicated. And we came up with Midnight. For the people that are on Twitter space, I'm showing the, the Midnight website right now. Uh, it says, design for developers, built for humanity. Midnight will be a data protection-based blockchain that safeguards sensitive commercial and personal data, protecting fundamental freedoms of association, commerce, and expression for developers, companies, and individuals. This and guy is just another one of those figures that has this like eerie, evil vibe to him, right? It is. Well, like and all the projects he works on. Oh my God, I can't even find Monero first. It's all this... Because I want to pull up what Monero said about it. Oh, there we go. And then I do have one. I want to play this. It's from June, but it just shows what he's thinking of. And also the, the comments are insane. Uh, but we'll play this in a second. Let, let's go back to uh, Monero. Monero. The Monero.com Twitter has been tweeting a lot more, I think, right? Looks like somebody somebody new took over the, the Twitter there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it's in a, this means nothing. I'm sorry you were conned by marketing. I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, oh. They said backdoor specifically. Got to draw the line somewhere reasonable. A privacy. Anything with backdoor isn't a threat. Backdoor. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they've been public about it. Uh, but what I do want to play, um, I want to play a, just a tiny bit, like the first 30 seconds of this video, because he talks about um, crypto and how it should be regulated. So let's uh, hear him talk about it. It's from June 23rd. Comments that any of you may have on of the 20,000 cryptos. There's an echo. How you determine who. There's an echo? Yeah. Did I have this echo before? No. No, only when you play the video. Yeah, just to play the video. That's weird. Uh, should be regulated. There you go. It's good. I just muted you. Yeah, that's why. Go. Well, uh, one of the powers of our industry is the fact that regulation can become algorithmic. Um, so you don't have to think, well, which person's going to sit down and look at this big pile? Uh, think of the IRS and tax returns. We could quadruple the size of the IRS. We still couldn't audit every single American. It's just not possible. And so what you have to do is say, what tools do we have at our, our capability? And what's magical about cryptocurrencies is that in the transactions themselves, they can carry metadata, they can carry identity. Uh, rule makers and policy makers can take a step back and say, well, these are the things that we're, we care about. 
and we can make sure inside the systems that uh, those things don't settle and clear until those things are present. People actually cheer this thing and they say, oh, thank you so much for representing the crypto community and being out there. This is exactly what we don't want. We don't want metadata in their hands, but it shows what his intentions are. So we'll see where that's going to go in, in the future, but I, I bet it's going to... He's clearly to not on the side of true digital cash. Like, that's very clear. So, yeah. I mean, he's building something. And for, you know, he, these things he builds, you know, uh, attracts a lot of users and investors. So it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but Monero marches on, marches on. Yeah. Whoa. Epic. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's crazy, but yeah, but let, let's, uh, let's talk about Twitter now. Well, guess who's back? Jordan Peterson is back. Andrew Tate is back. Oh my God. He had a hundred thousand followers yesterday. Wow. That's insane. And, uh, Trump may be back. Uh, Elon Musk made a poll. There's 52% votes for Trump and 47% against him coming back what, on the, on the what's platform. What's the current amount of votes in? 52% pro. No, 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 the amount, like amount of people that voted. No, no, no. 12 million. Wow. 12 million. Wow. That's insane. 12 million. It's, like it's super cool that he just threw it up there as a poll. I think that that's funny. But he shouldn't have been, a, like, it should have been a no brainer to begin with. Like, why is he hesitating to add? a political figure to what he's calling the ultimate free speech platform. Like there's no uh, more important form of speech than political speech, whether or not you agree with the guy. And it's yeah. like, why, why was there a hesitation to add him? Like, I don't really get Elon, man. I don't really get what his principles are. I know that like, I don't really understand where he stands. I don't know, but he's not really following Vox Populi, Vox Dei. Um, oh, uh, someone said that Babylon, Babylon B is back. Uh, yes, they're back as well. So we'll, we'll get into the freedom of speech in a, in a second. Uh, Ligma and Johnson are back, if you guys know them <laughs> from the no. pre previous episode. So the, the week that Elon bought Twitter, he fired a lot of people. And these two individuals were sitting in front of Twitter. They were just trolling. They weren't actually working for Twitter, but they had a box with their headphones and gadgets. Oh, yeah, I've seen these. Gadgets. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they actually <laughs> came back to Twitter just to... Hang well, they did them. it. They did it for another fiasco too, right? What was the original thing they did it for? Was it? Uh, I forget. But I yeah, only did it Twitter. For, did it for Twitter again. No, they did it for something else recently as a meme. I forget what it was. Oh, uh, FTX. No, maybe, maybe it was FTX. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was him. I think it was someone that that looked like him. Oh, was it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because it kind of looked. Yeah. I different. can't keep up with that shit. It was just funny, but. Uh, let's talk about the freedom of speech part. So new Twitter policy is freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. Negative hate tweets will be max deboosted, demonetized, so no ads or other revenue to Twitter. You won't find a tweet unless you specifically seek it out, which is no different from the rest of the internet. Uh, Kathy Griffin, Jordan Peterson, <laughs> Jordan Peterson, and Babylon B have been reinstated. Trump decision has not yet been made. So... Yeah, some people said bring back uh, Alex Jones, to which he said the firm no. <laughs> um, so it's I don't know, but regard like Twitter was really bad before, so I think it's trending at least in a way better position than what it was before. I mean, you can't make it worse than what it what it used to be at least. So yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, but it's getting better, I think. So I, I don't know, but I, I agree with, with what you said. Why why think so much about getting Trump back? I mean, I don't like any of them, but... I mean, it seems like you should have some policy set, so it shouldn't be like a question, right? It's like, it should... Mm -hmm. and, and to leave it... it like, it's, it is cool that he does a poll, right? But also, yeah. a poll is kind of a dangerous concept, right? Because that's saying we're leaving it up to the masses. And the whole point, the whole reason why protecting free speech is so important, because you have to protect the minority and the minority view uh, and, you know, the controversial view. So if everybody sits there and votes against it and there's only, you know, whatever, 10 percent that are saying yes to some person, that's the whole point. The whole point of free speech is that you let the, uh, the marketplace uh, decide in terms of the ideas of what somebody's saying, right? Not, right. Like, not 
deleting the person themselves. So yeah. it's kind of the antithesis of free speech. She's saying, let's leave it open to the majority to decide if this guy could even talk as opposed to letting him let letting people put their ideas out there and then letting the free flow of the marketplace of ideas decide which ideas move forward and don't. And then the whole thing with freedom of speech versus freedom of reach. That's interesting. As long as I mean, it sounds like, you yeah. know, certain people will be punished in terms of reach um, so it could effectively turn into the same thing i don't i don't know how they're doing that that's that's interesting so it's like you'll be able to to be on here and tweet anything but they'll they'll dampen the effect of of your reach if it's something that they uh whatever for whatever reason believe it's something that shouldn't be spread right yeah i hope it's not gonna be monero because then we'll all get like one like and that'll be from me from us. <laughs> right it's like you're back to you're like you know you have speech but you just never nobody's ever gonna see your tweets yeah you can talk but to the yourself. Dogecoin, to the moon yeah those to the moon you can talk to yourself <laughs> so but and allegedly twitter has never been as busy at, as it has been at 1 a.m in this picture <laughs> so he's getting people back back in in the office and that's him talking to this group of people about he's how they should buy Monero. Man. He's an oh, amazing man. CEO, this guy. He's insane. He runs so many companies. Also, it's crazy. But to see like the moves he's making at Twitter in real time, guys, amazing. Yeah, and he's having fun yeah. <laughs> also. But yeah, so and Kim.com tweeted, having another look at Monero. When I first saw this, I thought he said, have another look at Monero. But now I double read it again. He said, no, having, like he's having another look at Monero, which is, which is awesome. Now I've, I've been waiting for this tweet for a long time. And yeah, um, how many likes did it get? Come on, Kim, uh, almost 4K. Come on, Kim, like it's the top comment, I think. Come on, like just read it. <laughs> I, uh, maybe he saw it, you know, maybe. Or you say, hey, Kim, would you be interested in doing an episode of Monero talk? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. maybe Jump he off. saw it. Yeah. Who maybe knows? Right now. Yeah, but it'll be cool if we... We'll get his attention at some point. I think so. I think so as well. But uh, Justin tweeted something from Magic Grants. So he said, and I quote, I'm extremely excited about this one. The Magic Monero Fund Committee listened to the community concerns about using GoFundMe. And they set up a completely FOSS crowdfunding platform to accept donations in XMR, Bitcoin, and credit slash debit. I'm really proud. This website is a campaign donation tracker that works with Monero, Bitcoin, and credit slash uh, debit. So definitely go and, and check it out. It's um, so far there's two. No, there's more projects. No, just two so far. So go check it out, donate and uh, post your own project and help in some way. Now I want to talk about Torchain and Monero. So Tor Maximalist tweeted, in my opinion, my yeah, in my opinion, uh, Torchain is one of the most important pro projects for humanity's freedom. The easy thing would be to walk away from crypto here. I took the decision to buckle my seatbelt and double down. Moving all my nodes to bare metal ASAP, Monero is the missing puzzle piece. Now, Zimbabwe and Venezuela citizens live under tyrannical regimes. Crypto ad adoption there is high. We need to use the spirit to get the infrastructure ready. When it's needed, DeFi will be here. So... Uh, there's been talks about Torchain and and Monero, and um, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll we'll see that one day. Hopefully, I'm, I'm not sure. If not, that's that's a bit questionable, you know. But I hope that we'll we'll see it one day. Then I want to talk about an article from CoinDesk in regards to EU plans and privacy coins. So privacy enhancing crypto coins could be banned under leaked EU plans. Um, crypto providers could be forbidden from touching the likes of Monero or Dash under proposed government amendments to anti-money laundering rules. So <laughs> the thing is, Monero is already not on a lot of exchanges. So we'll see even if they, it's in the talks currently. So we'll see if it ever is going to be mandated. And if it's going to, we'll see how it's going to actually affect uh, Monero, but let's see a couple of things uh, from the article. The plans from Czech officials who are chairing talks among EU governments on the proposed law would represent the latest nail in the coffin for anonymous means of payment following the new rules agreed over the summer. Um, credit institutions, financial institutions, and crypto asset service providers 
shall be prohibited from keeping an anonymity enhancing coins, said a legislative draft seen by Coindesk dated November 9th, which has been circulated to the bloc's other 26 member states for comment. The ban on privacy coins, which prevent snooping into blockchain activity, is intended to mirror one on anonymous instruments such as bearer shares and anonymous accounts that was included in the original bill proposal. Oh yeah, um, in their parallel like, amendments uh, to the bill, lawmakers at the European Parliament have zeroed in on the processing of dirty money via the metaverse, decentralized finance and non-fungible tokens. The bill must be agreed by both the con Council and the European Parliament to pass into law. So, oh yeah, and in August, the US Treasury imposed sanctions on Ethereum-based privacy tool Tornado Cash, which is said was used to raise money for North Korea's weapons program. Well, the dollar was used for a lot of nefarious actions as well. So th these are just excuses to um, to just try to ban um, or minimize the usage of uh, privacy privacy coins, which we'll see how that's going to play out with uh, Monero eventually and uh, <laughs> what measures they're going to enforce. After they see that, he's, I, want, he's I mean, I would love to hear maybe in the spaces if people have any insight into this. Like, how, how real is this? How uh, how likely is it that this will actually be instituted? I know it's like the beginning phases, right? They're talking about it. It was even leaked. Privacy hazard could be, but the crypto provider would be. It was like leaked information. I'm just curious how likely this is. You know, do you have do we have insight into that yet? Not that I've seen. No, but. Yeah, so we can talk about this more in the spaces. Yeah, not that I've seen. No, no, but um, no, not, not that I've seen. But now let's talk about um, CBDC and what they really want to push. Uh, the New York Fed launches 12-week CBDC pilot program with major banks. Banking giants, including BNY Mellon, City, US Bank, and Wells Fargo will be issuing tokens and settling transactions through simulated central bank reserves as part of the pilot. They are experimenting with it. They try to see if it's going to improve the speed cost and access to cross-border wholesale payments, which of course is going to be like, this system is horrible at the moment. If you um, if you try to send money across the world, it's horrible. It takes a couple of days, uh, high fees. Uh, you might not even be able to do it. So of course that this is, a good solution just now there's cbdc what i what i do like is is when i say things as the following um federal regulators in the united states have not reached any consensus on whether to launch a digital dollar in the country uh, but agencies and those in the private sector have been exploring the possibility i like how they're playing the card of ah, we're not sure if it's gonna happen but we're playing with it it kind of reminds me of rishi sonak and how the prime minister of uh, britain and how he said that, uh, yeah, you'll have your CBDC and then you have cash as well. So don't worry about it. Uh, we might take it away one day. Of course they will, but don't worry. And just like they say, oh, don't worry about CBDC. We're just, we're just testing, might not come out. Of course it's gonna come out. It's just a play of words. And I hope that the, the day it will come, we'll see Monero back in the top five, just as it used to be in 2016. I'm showing a chart over here. Uh, Bitcoin was number one, Ethereum number two, Ripple was on the third place, Litecoin fourth, and Monero on the fifth. And it was only $6.9 <laughs> in 2016. So hopefully it's gonna be top five, maybe top three, and at a way bigger price than uh, $6 and what it is uh, right now. <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely. Definitely. For sure. Just go back, yeah, to the uh, the European Parliament trying to pass. It says the bill must be agreed by both the Council and the European Parliament to pass into law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any, anybody that has an insight into that, please please jump on when we uh, open it up. For sure. For sure. Uh, but other than that, that was it. That was the whole, uh, that's all I had for, for this week. Again, uh, the links are in the description. For the people that are on the Twitter space, make sure that you go on YouTube if you do want to see the visuals as well. And right. yeah, if you ever have anything to, to share, please add me on Telegram or on Twitter or anywhere and just uh, send me a link and maybe we'll we'll cover it. There's so many things happening. It's kind of hard to, to keep track. Like there's, I could have had double the amount of links and it still would have been like this 1% of all the things happening.
<laughs> and endless news. Endless news. <laughs> just endless. Snooze. I had to, slipped away to the bathroom as you were finishing. I, I had to throw a pen. He threw a pen. I was like, "What just happened?" To knock on the door. What we do back. for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta so go run. Left, now and... We gotta go run and do a family uh, activity while keeping the space going. <laughs>